This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. In a historic vote Sunday, the Mississippi State Legislature passed a bill to remove the Confederate battle emblem from the state flag, making it the last state in the country to do so. The move came amidst a nationwide uprising against racism that inspired protesters nationwide to topple statues of white supremacists and colonizers and a mounting pressure campaign in Mississippi, the state with the highest percentage of African Americans in the country. The National Collegiate Athletic Association, the NCAA, said it would not hold championship events in the state because of the flag. And Mississippi State star running back Kylan Hill said he would no longer represent Mississippi unless the racist symbol was removed. An NBC affiliate in Jackson, Mississippi, captured the moment the state flag was removed from the Capitol, where it has flown for 126 years. It's coming down. And you can hear protesters in the background. There are protesters at the state capitol all day who all day support long. this state flag. Mm -hmm. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, again, you're witnessing history in the state of Mississippi. A week before state officials in Mississippi voted to remove the flag, the African American mayor of Laurel, Mississippi, Johnny McGee, ordered its removal by executive order. He became emotional as the measure was signed. Should not be flown at any of the public facilities. I don't apologize uh, for being emotional. I have lived through some things with this flag. And as uh, they told Dr. King to wait, uh, time for waiting is over. Well, for more, we go to Jackson, Mississippi, to speak with Derek Johnson, president and CEO of the NAACP. He's the former Mississippi president of the NAACP. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Derek Johnson. It's great to have you with us. Let's begin right there. You have a long history with that flag um, as a native of Mississippi. Um, can you talk about the moment the legislature voted? And that, of course, moment didn't start there. It went way back to decades ago when you are trying to take it down? You know, we're, I am a part of a continuum. There have been efforts in the state of Mississippi for decades to have the flag removed. Uh, I inherited that fight. I inherited uh, the advocacy uh, uh, along the lines of ensuring that African Americans in this state was respected, but more importantly, to denounce a confederacy that took up arms against this nation. It is a conflict to say that you are patriotic, that you support the United States, and yet you want to display Confederate mem memorabilia. It's a conflict to say that, that all men and women are created equal under our Constitution, and yet you want to uh, utilize this rag of terror to display a heritage that's based on hate. And so from 1993, taking up the mantle or working through the matter with Senator Henry Kirksey and Aaron Henry, the former NAACP president, they filed a lawsuit. I was a plaintiff on that lawsuit while I was an undergrad. When the state, when the Supreme Court ruled in our favor that the flag was never adopted, uh, the legislature went back and then put it on a ballot referendum. I managed the campaign in 2001. And so here we are, 27 years later, and we're finally taking down uh, that 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 piece of rag that we call the former state flag for the state of Mississippi. And could you talk about the significance of this, not just for Mississippi, but for the entire country? Mississippi, of course, always being sort of the, the heartland of the Confederacy and the state uh, with the most notorious legacy in terms of, of uh, Jim Crow and, and, and racist and violent attacks against African Americans, what it means for the entire country? So first of all, that symbol was never the official flag of the Confederacy. It was the symbol used by uh, General Lee's Northern Virginia Army. It was resurrected as the a symbol of, of segregation and racial oppression in defiance of civil rights legislation and the federal government picking up steam uh, to 
States to comply with the creed that all men are created equal. Uh, it was the, the symbol displayed along with the burning of the cross in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s uh, as a reign of terror to prevent African Americans in this state from, from fully participating as citizens. So this has been a long journey and we've had to fight both against the symbol of racial oppression, oppression the, 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 the revisionist history of racial oppression, and now the next step is fight against the structural racism that's embedded in the public policy, not only in the state of Mississippi, but across the country. Derek Johnson, I want to ask you about the, uh, the, the sports teams and the power of them. I mean, you have coaches that didn't fight for this for years, who are walking the halls of the legislatures, demanding that the flag come down, because, of course, the action of the NCAA, the SEC, and the incredible bravery of um, Kylie Hill, um, who said he would no longer play under the Mississippi Confederate flag. Well, this is not new for the NCAA to take steps. Uh, we found in the early, I mean, the late 90s, early 2000s, they stood both with us and the state of South Carolina concerning the Confederate flags in both states. Uh, uh, they refused to hold NCAA-sanctioned tournaments in the state of Mississippi or South Carolina until the flag was addressed. Uh, there has been a history of individuals using their platform, particularly African Americans using their platforms who are athletes, uh, to, to speak out around social justice issues. So I encourage and support others to continue to use that, those platforms. But in the state of Mississippi, sports is big business. Sports are, is opportunity for uh, universities to recruit. And, and college football, in particular, uh, is generate a tremendous amount of revenue for this state. So once it was stated that the NCAA and the SEC finally was going to take even stronger stance, uh, it, 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 it really resonated with individuals who were concerned about the, the, the revenue that it would uh, uh, cause harm to. Um, I wanted to and, uh, turn to the issue of white power, um, that unbelievable tweet that Trump retweeted, the video of a man in the village's retirement community in Florida shouting white power at anti-racist protesters. He was in a golf cart. Trump shared the video Sunday morning with the caption, thank you to the great people of the villages. Um, after enormous outcry, he was forced to uh, delete that tweet. And uh, his people claimed he didn't see the video, but he did not condemn it, even when it was pointed out to him. Um, Derek Johnson, the significance of this. It, it, it is a part of the narrative of this administration. Uh, it has not only catered to white supremacist groups and, and individuals who will scream that type of noise. Uh, they, we still have Steve Miller in the White House, a known white supremacist. Uh, the atmosphere that we are, are, are seeing today leading up to the George Floyd unfortunate uh, murder in the middle of the street has really been uh, accelerated because this White House willingness to allow racial hatred to germinate from the White House. We, we have not seen this level of disregard for human life, this level of just blatant racism from a sitting president, perhaps since Woodrow Wilson. This is something that we, that, that we should all be aghast by, but we don't expect this president to apologize. This is the person who, who created a false equivalency in Charlottesville, this is a person who's completely tone deaf to to children along the border. This is a president that that revels in this notion of supremacy because it gives him comfort level for his ego driven personality. Uh, I wanted to ask you, in terms of this spread of hate and racism, the the NAACP and other civil rights groups called on advertisers to boycott Facebook during the month of July as part of a campaign called Stop the Hate for Profit. There's been a phenomenal uh, response, about 160 companies, including Unilever and Coca-Cola, Honda, and uh, others uh, have uh, heeded that call. And now we're, we're seeing uh, Mark Zuckerberg suddenly, as, his, as the stock price 
uh, plummeted for Facebook, suddenly announcing that he's going to make some changes in his uh, policy. Could you talk about this whole issue of the Facebook and the social media platforms that are actually fueling division uh, and hate throughout the country? Well, as we see symbols of racism taken down, and like Mississippi flag and statues of Confederate soldiers who created a treasonous act under this notion of white supremacy, we must also advocate against platforms that are, would allow the hosting of, of recruitment of white supremacists and the ad purchases of those groups. Particularly when you look over the over the last one, when you had that incident called Boogaloo, where individuals, white supremacists, met up on Facebook and they murdered a federal officer. Uh, for the NAACP, we absolutely agree in freedom of speech, but you cannot scream fire in a theater. And when you have a platform as large as Facebook, essentially a public utility, uh, and they refuse to protect the citizens and protect our democracy. Uh, there is no government regulations. You cannot have a, 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 a consumer boycott of such a, a mega company. Uh, the only next step was to ask those corporations who have now stood up uh, do it in the midst of the current environment to take another step. Let's right-size how this platform is used to protect individuals and to protect our democracy. Let me go to um, Mark Zuckerberg. On Friday, as uh, the stocks for Facebook were tanking. A handful of times a year, uh, we make a decision to leave up content uh, that would otherwise violate our policies uh, because we consider that the public interest value uh, outweighs the risk of that content. And you know, often here, uh, seeing speech from, from politicians um, is in the public interest. And, and in the same way uh, that news uh, outlets will, will often report what a politician says, uh, we think it's important that people should generally be able to see it for themselves on, on our platforms, too. So we will start uh, soon labeling um, some of the content that we leave up uh, because it is deemed newsworthy. So, so now people are going to be able to know uh, when, when that designation has been made. So that's Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, who previously refused to take action against posts by President Trump, including one threatening violence against protesters. Can you respond to what he's saying about starting to label posts that are newsworthy but violate the company's policies? Well, it's a small step, but much more can be done. They, their algorithms need to be changed so they're not pushing racial hate content on people's Facebook pages. There needs to be what's called a separation of church and state, that their content is not housed in their policy shop because their policy shop is catering to this administration. There's so much more that more can be done. You know, in 2016, a foreign nation paid with foreign currency as promoting a Black Lives Matter, and Black Lives Matter had no concept that this foreign nation Japan with foreign cur currency was doing it. They did nothing to prevent it. There's so much more that this platform can do to safeguard the public interest while at the exact same time allowing for free, free, free speech. This platform is able to get away with stuff that this network and broadcast media cannot do. And we're simply saying, put the safeguards in place. You have the technology. You know what to do. Just do it. Protect the citizens of this country. Protect our democracy. Yeah, uh, in that vein, I wanted to ask you, I'm an old-fashioned journalist. Uh, the companies that I've worked for, whether it was the, the Daily News or, or, or Democracy Now!, if, they, if we published something that was libelous or defamed people, uh, uh, we would be held legally responsible. These platforms uh, uh, insist that they are platforms and not publishers. Do you think that there has to be uh, changes to the law to hold them responsible for the uh, for the, their dissemination of uh, what is essentially hate, lies, and, and libel? Well, absolutely. They are trying to be both uh, a, a, a platform to allow for content, and they also want to be new cover, cover news. You can't be both. And, it, 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 and there needs to be guardrails. You cannot scream fire in a the theater. Therefore, you should not allow for your platform to be used as a gathering point for white supremacist groups to, to meet up and then go cause harm to individuals, to murder federal law enforcement agencies. 
Uh, it, it is unconscionable that, that this is such a hard thing to comprehend. We, you cannot allow your platforms to be manipulated for a foreign government to misinform the American public around elections and election uh, processes. Just think about what happened with Jack Dorsey and Twitter when they took the bold step to begin to uh, identify misinformation related to the elections and they, they flagged it. It was Facebook who criticized them for that. And now he's doing an about face. We have to have uh, real clear rules of engagement for this platform to protect American citizens, particularly African Americans and individuals in the Jewish community. Anti Semitism and, and, and racism is rampant on the platform. And what's happening there is you get the, the murder at Mother Emanuel Church in South Carolina, and you get the, the shootings in, in the syn uh, synagogue in Pittsburgh. We must do more to protect the citizens of this country, and this platform is posing a true danger to too, far too many individuals across the country. Derek Johnson, very quickly, the Georgia hate crimes law that was just passed, uh, Governor Kemp signed it into law Friday. It's going into effect immediately. Uh, talk about—I mean, it means there's just a handful of states in the country left that don't have a hate crimes law. Uh, a major victory for the NAACP and people throughout Georgia. Can you talk about it? I think it's a tremendous victory. There's more to be done. We have a young, dynamic state leader there, 26-year-old uh, James Woodall is doing a, a, a great job. Uh, we also have the issue of the independence of district attorneys we have to address. Ahmad Aubrey is a good example. Uh, it was clear on the video that he was murdered, but that district attorney refused to bring charges forward. So as we celebrate the legislative victory, we have an election in November to elect accountable district attorneys to to hold law enforcement agencies accountable when they cause harm illegally against the communities they are sworn to protect and serve. Uh, but you criticized HB 838. Can you explain what was also passed? So give me more, because the, 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 I, so many, it's 50 states with HB 38. So oh, um, are you talking about Georgia um, or are you the, talking about the House bill in it, DC, no, you, in, yeah. in, in Georgia <laughs> that uh, provides police protection. Uh, many said it was more dangerous than HB 426. The hate crimes bill was good. Uh, uh, to see the legislature prioritize HB 838 instead of repealing citizens' arrest is heartbreaking and does not do justice to my son, said um, Ahmed Arbery's uh, mother. Yeah. I mean, this notion of citizen's arrest, we have to be careful because you have so many people who've decided they're going to take the law in their own hand unjustifiably. Uh, when you have an individual who's simply walking down the streets eating Skittles, uh, Trayvon Martin, or an individual who's jogging in their neighborhood, Ahmaud Arbery, or an individual who's bird watching in Central Park and have an Amy Cooper decide to commit a racial hate crime, the whole notion of of denying someone's existence to enjoy peacefully of their surroundings in their community and allow a citizens to step up and try to enforce a law that's, that haven't even been broken. Uh, we have to be careful with that. And I'm always worried about this concept of citizens' arrest when you have unjustifiable uh, uh, scenarios, as we've seen over several years, not just in Ahmaud Arbery, but over several years. Uh, you know, you, you, you maintain a culture where you continue to put people's lives in danger. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us, Derek Johnson, president of the NAACP, speaking to us from Jackson, Mississippi, Mississippi that's just voted to take down and remove the state flag, the last in the country to include the Confederate emblem. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we go to an encampment outside New York City Hall, where people are demanding a billion-dollar cut from the police department's $6 billion budget. Stay with us.